Okay, so here's a little video of my new Hardinge HLV lathe that has been retrofitted, uh, refurbished, and retrofitted with a Centroid CNC from uh, Babin Machine. Uh, these guys are down in Boston, just <laughs> do fabulous work. Um, but anyway, they won't go into much detail on that now. What I want to show you is what I've set up here to do my barrels for bench rest shooting. I've uh, created a spider here with uh, four uh, bolts in it so that I can get the bore um, of the barrel concentric with the spindle because uh, the bore is not necessarily in the middle of a barrel um, when it's finished. And in the back end here you can see I've taken the collet closer off and I've made a similar spider and that is to help uh, make sure we get that bore on center. So I've written a program that should uh, do this thing um, for us. Cut the tenon, do the threads, uh, cut a little radius on the edge of the tenon, cut the 25 degree uh, cone that is required for the bat machine uh, bench rest action, the DS action, and to drill and bore the chamber. So let's uh, fire away here. Go into the, this is the program we've got. If we hit the graphing function, you can see more or less what we're doing here. Cutting the tenon, uh, that dark line there is for the threads. This is cutting the cone. This is uh, drilling and then boring out the, the slightly tapered chamber for this, the 6 PPC cartridge. So let's, uh, let's post that. Set uh, spindle to auto and we should be good to go. One thing I do need to do and I haven't set yet is got about that when I was bidding is I've got to set my zero point for this particular tool. So I'm going to quickly do that and I can show you how I do it. Literally come here and take a um, take a facing cut. It really doesn't have to be, you can see I've just deemed that there to say be 15, positive 15 thousandths. I would then go uh, into my setup for my part, tool number one, instead of zero I'm going to set that at 0 0.015, so we're going to, s and then hit the set button and we're good to go. So now with that I'm going to restart the program now it will face it down to zero it's doing the finish cut you could probably hear the lead increase in speed slightly now I'm going to go down and cut the, the OD I'm going to cut this tenon down to 1.059 inches. And that's the required diameter before we thread the 18 TPI. Cutting this dry so we don't get the noise of the the mister. Looks like our second last cut here, 1063. Uh, you can see on the 
control 106 speed and we should be going to 105.9 you heard the spindle speed increase slightly it will come down and toward the end you'll see it'll actually just cut the flat for the shoulder after this its task will be just to cut that tiny little profile on the end that I want because I want to round that and now it's asking for tool change it is uh, you'll see here on the display it's asking for the to do the thread cycle now uh, tool number two so let's do that putting tool number two in it's always important to keep this uh, very clean because this will affect your tool height if not I'm going to run some coolant on here so it'll be a little bit more noisy or not coolant but mister Cutting these threads really slow because I really don't need to go and hog out the threads. There's no hurry. I'm looking for a decent quality thread. Um, this thing will finish with a couple of um, spring passes, as we call it, which we just did there. Get rid of some of this. Switch the and uh, that's what it looks like after our threading cycle. Perfect threads. That thing focus in a bit there. It's now calling uh, for tool uh, 13 over here. It wants to do the, the cone. Tool 13 is in. It's a rather long process this. I don't think I've really perfected this cycle. As you can see, it's cutting a lot of air. And um, I've got a couple of different ways of doing this. For now, I've just decided to do a standard uh, taper facing cut. Turning cycle. You can see that there's the cone is starting to come out now. should be coming to the end of the cycle again I'm doing a lot of these processes really slow not too bothered about the efficiency at the moment as much as I am the accuracy yeah, it's the looks like the finishing pass Now I'm calling for the drill cycle, uh, drill 11, and the purpose of that is to rough out the chamber. Here we have uh, the drill in. Uh, as you can see, I've just uh, roughly mounted it in a boring tool holder. So let's watch this, uh, let's take off, yeah. This is a deep hole. Uh, cycle so it allows for retraction of the tool. I, did, I programmed that in because I wanted to see the 
I wanted to see the chip thing removed a little bit better. As I say, this is just rough. Obviously, the final stage is going to be the boring process where we actually bore out the, the chamber, and then the last stage would be to use a reamer to to get the final cut on the chamber. Here we go, that's the drill cycle finished. Now calling for um, 214 here, it's a turning cycle and this is going to be, as I say, the, the bore, the boring cycle for the chamber. Which I'm going to cut to within about four thousandths of the final diameter of the chamber. So let's get this started. I'm going to run a little bit of coolant on this as well. Get some of the chips out of there. As you can see, it's cutting a taper. You've got X and Z moving at the same time because the, the cartridge does have a, uh, a tapered wall to it. Not much, but it's there. This again is a, uh, a deep boring cycle. So we did a deep drill cycle and this is a deep boring cycle. Probably not necessary, but stirring on the side of caution. What's nice about this control is uh, I have this button here, which the centroid control allows me to override the feed rate. So it doesn't change the, the RPM at all. Um, that has been programmed in during the cycle, but any time, you know, if I want to fiddle and a little nervous, I can run this thing from zero, so I can stop the feed rate completely, or run it at the programmed 100% or a little bit more, you know, a little bit less, whatever I want, and then that's displayed up here. You can see the feed rate changing there as I, as I cycle it. Just put it on 100%, there you go. Here's the finish cycle. And that is uh, the finished barrel actually. All I really need to do now is run a rima into the correct chamber depth. I'm about 100,000 so, f no, not even 100, I think I'm about 75,000 so final depth. Um, and uh, it's literally a two, three minute job to finish it off. So, hope this is gonna work out well for me.